Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the Hobby Barn Basement on the second build video or assembly video for the nitpicks of the OV10 Bronco from Hangar 9. Uh, progress so far and some notes as I have gone on uh, for some things that people may want to know. Um, it's important that as you go through this build, uh, there are going to be some things that you're going to find that um, aren't going to jump right out of the book, and I wanted to point them out. <clears throat> the first thing is, as you're working through the elevator, which is really the first thing you're going to do um, as you're choosing a servo, uh, it calls for a specific one. I believe it's an A6310 or a 6300, which is a Spectrum servo. Um, the replacement or the substitute for that is the A6320. You're going to need the Junior Metal 1-inch arm to go with that. It is a digital servo. Um, the reason for that is if you try to find a high-tech version of it in an equivalent size, you're going to have difficulty. Um, the quarter scale equivalent of that is far too big and would require way too much modification to be effective in that small area. Uh, believe it or not, for as large as this model is, you're really only dealing with about an inch of depth within that tail surface. So I wanted to point that out. Uh, the rest of it, the servo is almost a drop-in fit. It required just a bare minimum of sanding uh, to fit down in there and then go in correctly. Um, the next thing, when you epoxy the hinges, take your time and make sure you oil your hinge points. There's nothing worse than getting epoxy in a non-oiled hinge. It ruins it, and it makes it a nightmare. These big hinges, and there are a lot of them, need to move freely. Um, fortunately, I did not have a problem with this. However, there's a lot of hinging to do, and it's time-consuming, and it's tedious. And if you don't get it right the first time, it's going to be a nightmare to undo. Uh, so the next thing, I want to make sure I, I point this out because it's very important. There are certain aspects within the um, instructions where it calls out for a one-inch servo arm. But it does not call out for a one-inch servo arm in the entire book. But what I'm finding is you need at least that length in your servo arms in every one of these um, surfaces or your geometry doesn't work out correctly. And you're going to hear me use that term several times throughout this video. Uh, and I'm going to start with the aileron. <clears throat> when I originally did this, it, there's a mistake in the book. So I'm going to call it out. And so far, it's the only one I've found. The book calls for the aileron servo to be as high and as close to the top, to the door, as possible. That is wrong, folks. Don't put it as high as possible. It needs to sit as low in that as possible. If not, your servo arm, as it comes out through here, will not reach your control surface properly. Your angle is wrong. The second thing is, if you don't use at least a one-inch servo arm, it won't work. Anything shorter than that changes your geometry, and then you're forced to have to cut down in and make that deeper. Now this is a beefy quarter inch piece of plywood. You could probably do it and mess with it or remount it, etc. But in order for it to work properly, it calls for one inch, you need to use a one inch. Um, once that's set down in all the way, your geometry works out. I had to trim one little piece right here and it worked out just fine. Uh, the next thing I want to point out along with this, and it applied to all of the rods as you make them, uh, it calls for a minimum of 12 turns on your ball links. And then it gives you a certain length. Uh, I believe it was either four and a half or five and a half inches. Either way, to reach that, it's about 30 turns a side to get down to that length. Now, that was not a problem with the ailerons. Just because you have to offset the arm on the aileron anyway, just by the nature of this, for it to work correctly. Uh, for it to be straight, you would have to unscrew these so far that they wouldn't be safe. Um, 
but as I got into the uh, flap surfaces, it became an issue. There, first of all, again, it doesn't call for it, but you have to use at least a one inch servo arm here. Um, the second thing is when you're attaching your flaps to the surface, it tells you to hinge these, to make the arm, attach it to this, slide it through as you're putting it all together in one piece. Don't do it. Make the arm, make sure it slides through, do a test fit, but leave it off. It's a pain in the butt, folks, to try and attach this whole surface with that on, make sure it's over the tray. It's so much easier to set your hinges because you got to do it at the same time in order for this surface to set correctly. Because you have to line up each one of these hinges along your line, your center line, and it does take some time. Don't plan on doing more than one at a time, one flap at a time. Even with 30 minute epoxy, I found that I was burning through the half-life of that epoxy, getting them set correctly, because you're gonna move the surface to ensure your hinges are straight. It is, just plan on it taking some time. It's tedious work, but get it right. Um, now back to the arm, I wanna comment that what I ended up doing, it, it tells you in the book to set the geometry within the servo, the, the travel and such, it tells you your half flap needs to be 30 degrees and your full flap needs to be 80 degrees. I messed uh, and spent a significant amount of time. 80 degrees is a big, big uh, thing. It's, it's almost completely vertical uh, on your flap. That's 80 degrees. This is 90, that's 80. It's almost impossible. I spent several hours trying to achieve that and the only way to get it I found was to lengthen the rod almost all the way back out to the original 12 turns and then I had to run the servo endpoints almost from front to back. It just didn't work. There's just not enough throw at least within the high-tech servo that I'm using for that to be practical. Now that may work with a different servo uh, a different size servo, maybe the Spectrum servos will do it. Uh, I don't like to run endpoint to endpoint. It's just not good. You're, you're setting yourself up. Now, I will say I did lengthen the rods back. These are probably at 15 or 16 turns a piece on the flaps. Uh, that way I had some room to adjustment adjust them. Um, my sub trim on this was about 130 to the negative to get it at the right distance and as you can see it's got a back angle my full flap deployment is 60 degrees if this doesn't if that doesn't slow this plane down then houston we have a problem my half flap again is at 30 degrees they work flawlessly you're going to have to do it four times so you're going to need four individual channels for that uh, make sure that if you're not using the spectrum power safe receiver with this plane that you use either a power box or an AR, something that's got at least 12 to 14 open slots that will give you the availability to program individually. Now, my IX-12, I, what I've done is I'm using just a, a basic uh, receiver right now so I can program the channels within the radio. Uh, and then when my AR uh, power box comes, the basic programming for me will be finished. I won't have to go back in and redo it, just uh, set the trims uh, anyway, right now, ailerons work, internal flaps work, uh, and all that wiring is complete. These are finished. I still have yet to finish the inboard wing flaps, but everything has been set. I've already got the rods in the correct lengths or as close as they're going to be. These are some of the wires that I'm going to use for the short distances from the internal flaps, and they're going to route through these holes. Um, I don't think I ran into any other major problems besides that. I just wanted to point out that uh, you are going to have to make adjustments on these. And the other part of this, folks, just so you know, when that flap is up, you have easy access to get to that rod. That's why I mentioned instead of having it attached when you put it on the plane, don't. 
put it on after the fact. Let the let the glue dry, let your epoxy dry, and then go back in, set your servo, set your arm, then put your rod on because those uh, ball links are stiff and they're so much easier to adjust out of the plane than trying to do it in the plane. Uh, I think that's about it for this video. I can't think of anything else that I ran into major. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I appreciate you following my build so far. Uh, once the flaps are done on the inboard, I'm going to be moving on to the rudders and the booms, uh, and then it'll be on to landing gear. So video three will be covering those things, and uh, hope everybody has a wonderful day and you enjoyed my video. Thanks for watching.